This is a difficult video to make for me. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hello, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Cam. And if you're not new and you keep coming back again and again, thank you. I really appreciate you. Today's video is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting me, you guys. I really appreciate it. Patreon is a platform where I prefer to share a more personal kind of videos that I'm not comfortable sharing on YouTube. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. And with that, let's get into the video. Back in November 2020, when the whole Without a Crystal Ball versus Tati case kind of came to the surface, um, I made two or three videos defending crypto art because there was some drama going around and some allegations that she doxed crypto art and I don't think that's okay. And when that happened, I... Uh, tweeted at the time Shannon Crypto Art had a Twitter account and I tweeted at her and we uh, became friends through that tweet and she then came on my channel and I interviewed her on my channel. This is the reason why it's difficult for me to make today's video because essentially I have a bias in this situation but I didn't want to let this affect the reporting of the story if that makes sense. So I'm going to structure the video in two kind of halves. The first half, I want to report on what's been happening with Creepshow and the low cow allegations. And the second half, I would like to tell you what kind of friend uh, Shannon has been to me. Lolcow is a website where people kind of go and gossip about influencers and stuff like that. It's a website where people are anonymous, but they have some rules and if you break the rules, the punishment is that the admins will revoke your anonymity and they will reveal your identity. Well, a few days ago, the admin, one of the admins of Lolcow revealed Creepshow's identity, basically exposing that she has been posting on LolCow and the post goes as follows. As many users in this thread are aware, Shannon's posts on LolCow haven't exactly been subtle. We've decided to compile her post history after she escalated her behavior by sharing her sister's social media in order to deflect from criticism towards herself. Beyond that, she had been anonymously promoting her videos and Patreon YouTube membership to farmers and making posts about herself to either white knight or insult herself. For many years, we've had a policy to reveal post histories of users who go to great lengths to use lolcow.farm to propel their own online presence. You can read the full post history here. Then they made a full thread with all the posts, that, it's 272 posts that uh, Shannon had been posting on lolcow. She had been posting until uh, recently, until like two or three months ago. and. Basically, some of the posts are really, really damning. Some of the posts are homophobic and some of the posts kind of talk in a nasty way about people that she is friends with in the uh, public eye. Like Ready to Glare, D'Angelo Wallace and Corpse Husband. And I think there were several, honestly, like I have gone through all of them, but it's just like so much to take in. And as I am personally friends with her, it's like I just, I needed to step away from all the threads. But kind of the most difficult part for me personally was the post about Ready to Glare because Ready to Glare and her have been friends in the public eye and she's been highly um, complimentary of Ready to Glare all the time, even in the conversation that we had. That was very difficult to see because Ready to Glare tweeted saying my heart fucking hurts. And I've been a loyal subscriber and fan of Ready to Glare for a long time and it just kind of hurts to see that because I imagine that Julia seeing something kind of nasty about herself coming from someone that she considered a friend is probably really, really difficult. And I'm sure this goes for the other people that uh, the posts were about. Now, I'd like to just explain that I don't know how IP addresses work and um, I'm not sure how accurate they are when it comes to locating somebody. I do think that you can locate someone with an IP address, but I don't know how easy that is to do, etc., etc. So I'd like to just say that, but according to the LolCow admins, they have located several IP addresses coming from several devices that were pointing to her location. In response to all of this, Shannon posted a community post that reads, this post is going up because I need to talk about this and let you know what's going on. Earlier today, I got a message saying I had Docs, the relative, 
that I had been calling out for saying certain things about myself and other creators and more on a hate forum. And I was confused because I hadn't done that. I would remember doing that, especially the doxing. That's so firmly against what I stand for and I don't believe in doing that even to someone I loathe. However, after being sent screenshots of what I allegedly said about me, myself, my friends and most importantly my relative, I realized what had happened. A couple of years back I made a video about how I had been stalked over for over eight years by a woman called Amy. That's not her real name because I was protecting her identity. I talked in detail about that situation, how it affected me and what I had to do in that situation to keep myself safe. But I also discussed how Amy and I kind of reconciled at the end of that and came to an understanding. She even liked the video and supported me making it. We kept in contact over the past couple of years and I thought I kept a good amount of distance between us, never letting her close enough to hurt me again. Apparently I'm really shit at that. Obviously I was wrong because she had gone back to doing what she had always done, which is to try and hurt me try to turn the people in my life against me and salivate at the idea of me losing everything. She did this for years, even when I didn't have anything to the point where when I was dating my husband, she sent him text messages telling him I was a horrible person and he should leave me. She made a fake Facebook account to tell people what a terrible person I was and she just spent years fucking with me non-stop to the point where I just wanted to end it. I had a sneaking suspicion she had been going back to this earlier this year when I started receiving more and more images of self-harm and abuse in my inbox because that was one of the biggest things she would do to me. I didn't want to believe it though because I'm a polarizing creator and some people on the internet just don't have boundaries. It's why I had to shut down my Instagram and low-key why I had to shut down Twitter. I've stated publicly and behind the scenes that the amount of harassment I have received had gone down by 100% when I deleted Twitter and now I know why because of Amy. When she was harassing me in high school I would get so many images of self-harm and self-injury that it would cause me to shut down emotionally. I had confided in her back when we were friends that that was one of my biggest sore spots. Seeing something like that was just the number one way to hurt me online. So when it started happening in excess again, I started to think maybe it was her. Maybe she had gone back to that way of being. But I didn't want to think that because we had been so good the last time we talked. The last time we emailed, it had been lovely with her catching me up on my life and doing the same back. I didn't know she was going to use everything to try to paint me as something I'm not. And I didn't think I needed to use a VPN so she wouldn't get my IP address. She had shown me pictures of her daughter and been so supportive of my channel. I thought we were okay, but I was wrong. Because she's been posting on certain sites, post posing as me, spoofing my IP, doxing my family members, writing things about myself and my friends, sending me death threats from other accounts, making false accounts to spam my comment section, spamming the comment section of my friends, saying hateful things about me in order to get them to drop me, and just all around doing what she did years ago. That's not it, of course, but the amount of time and energy she has put into this is well beyond what I thought she was capable of, as far as I can tell. She's been doing this for over a couple of years. That is not to say I haven't messed up or been rightfully criticized, mind you. I'm not blaming her for people being critical of me. I don't know how she did it, I don't know why she did it, but the moment my relative was brought up out of the blue, I knew it was her. She has literally been obsessed with my relative to the point of constantly bringing them up in our conversations, asking me about them and using them to hurt me, even in high school. So I'm sending out a cease and desist, and if it comes to it, I will be filing a full restraining orders. I don't want to have to do that because she has a daughter and this will go on her record, which will keep her from being able to get a job and providing for that child. And I keep going in circles in my head because of this and I don't know what's right in this situation but I also don't want this to continue I just wanted this to be done all I have ever wanted was for this to be done and it's getting to the point where I have to uh, protect myself and my family. I just wanted to update you guys because there is that narrative floating around now that I said terrible things about myself and doxed a relative of mine online and it's not fucking true. All I can say is that it's not fucking true. I completely understand if no one believes me. I understand if I lose friends over this. But the fact that it's been over 10 years of this shit is exhausting. The fact that two fucking years ago I made a video about this exact thing happening about this person doing this to me, going to these extremes, hopefully says a lot. This has been going on for nearly half of my fucking life and I'm tired of it. I am going to be keeping the rest of this offline where it belongs, so if you have questions, I'm sorry, I'm not answering them, but I wanted to address it. Again, I talked about this two fucking years ago, only to have her go around and do this shit again. I am learning every day how much time she has dedicated to harassing me, and it goes deeper than I ever thought. Now, when this happened and she posted about it on Instagram, I saw it and I was like, hey, what's going on? Is this about Hello Leash? And I just said, don't engage, let it blow over. I thought it was just in regards to her 
kind of defending Gabby Hanna a year ago and I was like, I was just not, I don't, don't engage with that. And um, she didn't respond to whether or not it was about Hello Leash. And I just said, I'm here if you want to talk and um, I, I don't know what's what, but you've been a real friend to me and I'm not about to leave you alone throughout all of this. And she said, I appreciate that. I kind of thought throughout all of this that it was about Hello Leash and I didn't realize this, there was just much more to the story and there was a whole other separate thing on Lolcow. And when I kind of caught up to it, I just, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. And I feel really, I don't know what to think because obviously my bias as a friend of hers is going to come into play. So this is what I want to talk about, my friendship with Creepshow. A lot of people have been saying that it seems like a bit of a stretch, that don't, they don't buy it, etc, etc. I don't know if it is true or not. I don't know if the allegations against her from Lolcow are true. What I do know is what my experience has been with her. And regardless of the Lolcow things, I would like to just kind of mention what um, my experience has been of being a friend with her. So as I mentioned earlier, we've been friends since November, it's been about seven months now. So um, we've been talking on and off on Instagram, but I, what I will say is that. But, and, and Crypto has actually proved to be a really good friend to me. Literally the moment I was served with the lawsuit from Marissa Pierre, Shannon Creepshow sent me a message on uh, Instagram so I just replied to her and I said uh, oh my god I've just been sued by Marissa Pier oh my god like I was just freaking out basically and she was really really supportive to me in response she just replied to me and we had a video call and she was just like trying to reassure me that everything's gonna be fine and basically kind of helped me come up with a strategy on how to just kind of move forward with this and she was actually the one that suggested that I do a fundraiser to raise funds for um, the lawsuit fees because they are very very expensive and um, I just don't have any money to cover them. So I took some weeks to think about it and after I found the lawyer and I realized just how expensive it is um, I was like well I have no option but to start a fundraiser so I did. I started a fundraiser and I sent it to her and she immediately donated as an anonymous donor a, a thousand pounds to it. And I can't express just how grateful I am to that. And she also shared my fundraiser on her community page. And, you know, she's been a real friend. She's been there for me when I needed support and that's all I know in terms of being friends with her. I'm not sure how to feel in this situation. Obviously, if this was her and she is the one posting on Lolcow, it's not a good look. If that was her who posted on Lolcow, that is pretty bad. And I, wouldn't, I don't want to justify those actions and I don't want to defend those actions because no. But I also wanted to tell you guys the kind of friend she's been to me, just... I don't know. I'm not here trying to change public perception, but I just really tried to let this go. Um, and I tried not to make a video about it and I just couldn't let it go. It's just been so heavy on me and I felt an obligation to talk about my experience and that's it. So um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you'd like to check out my Patreon, there's a link in the description below. Like this video if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. It sound right, boy.